Hello. Today I'd like to continue the second part of the weighing pros and cons for tanks when you're starting to get into the marine hobby and just kind of weighing the different options and deciding what's best for you and what's best for your budget and that sort of thing. So uh, I discussed in the previous video the simplest tanks that I generally recommend which would be a 20 long and a 40 breeder. Okay. So now we're going to start stepping it up into being a bit more serious as far as your commitment to the hobby and if you're willing to commit to that. Um, with a, uh, a pre-drilled tank that's running a sump, preferably. Um, some people say, hey, you know, just drill the tank. Well, you know, you might want to take a real close look at that before you do it because a lot of times in that case, uh, tanks once they start getting bigger and they're not drilled from the factory, they have a tendency to have tempered glass and you start drilling tempered glass and you've got a shattered tank on your hands. So uh, I would give some serious consideration to that. Um, the best thing I can recommend to you to do is to go down to a local fish store if you're wanting a bigger tank for starting out and to get a uh, used reef ready setup. It'll save you a ton of money, ton of hassle, because you have all the equipment basically that you're going to need to that was designed to run with a setup of that given size um, and save you a lot of money in the process. You just need to sanitize it. So anyways, the first tank I'm gonna talk about, and this is a pretty big step up from the 40 Breeder, would be a reef ready or pre-drilled 75 gallon tank. Now you might be sitting there going, hey, whoa, whoa, wait a second, what about the 55 gallon tank? The problem with the 55 gallon tank, yes, it has the four foot length, which is really nice, uh, but a lot of times it's right at that tipping point, in my opinion, between uh, a sumpless tank and a sump tank, where um, you're wanting to start transitioning over to a sump-based filtration system, which requires a uh, drilled tank, for best case results, a drilled tank, with uh, a smaller sump tank in there for increased flow. If you have questions on, you know, basically what a sump is or whatever, I have another video here that has a basic description of the sump and how it functions uh, with a layout of my 90 gallon with its sump. So, but anyways, the 55 gallon, in my opinion, it's, it's only got a, like a 12 inch width. It's just really skinny. So it doesn't really, I mean, other than dwarf angels, it really doesn't give you that many extra options. And then finding a pre-drilled 55 can be a bit of a challenge, whereas a 75 is a lot easier to come by. So that's one of the other reasons that I recommend bumping it up from going from the 40 breeder to a 75. Um... And the other tanks in between, like a 60 or 65, sometimes they come in weird dimensions where they focus more on height rather than length and width. And so I'm just, I'm not a big fan. Uh, so yeah, a 75 gallon would be the next step up that I would recommend. That bumps you up to a tank that's four feet long and 18 inches wide, which is a good dimensions. Um, it opens up your stock options considerably for fish. Um, basically just about any of the smaller peaceful wrasses you can do, uh, the Halichorus wrasses, uh, the, you know, like the Melanaris, the Redline wrasse, the, uh, the Claudia Christmas wrasse, um, Yellow Chorus wrasse, these fish will all work well in a 75 gallon tank, uh, as will the red lined wrasse, if I haven't mentioned that already. So you can get those, you can get into some of the fairy wrasses, you know, like an orange back, or some of the more exotic fairy wrasses with different colorations, provided your budget provides, of course, since they tend to be a bit more pricey. Um, flasher wrasses, you're also good to go with them, just pretty much any of them. Although I do recommend sticking with the generally peaceful varieties other than maybe, say, the Lubbocks or Tricolor Wrasse, which I mentioned in the last video. That one would be okay. Um, 
In addition to the 75 gallon uh, for RASs, you're also looking at being able to add basically uh, whatever drawer for Pygmy Angel you want to put in there. Um, although I do recommend some caution and, and doing your due diligence and research in there because some of the dwarf angels and pygmy angels are more prone to nipping at corals than others. So do a bit more research into that. Uh, generally speaking, the recommendation um, for better than average for coral nipping would be a coral beauty, flame angel, or potters. The ones that are really bad, are notoriously bad for nipping at corals would be like the lemon peel. Um, bicolor isn't necessarily terrible for nipping at corals. They can be, um, but their survival rate is horrible in captivity, so I don't recommend them either. Um, let's see, the Ebly or the Red Striped Angel is also terrible for nipping at corals, as is the Half Black. Um, those ones are all ones that uh, I recommend real extreme caution or strictly for fish only with live rock tanks as they're very, very prone to nipping at corals. So, uh, in addition to the dwarf angels, <coughs> excuse me, and having a good options there, yes, 75 gallons, you can actually start looking at small the smaller bristle tooth tangs, something like a coal tang or a square tail, um, a tamini tang or flame fin tang as they're known, the two spot bristle tooth, also known as the blue eye coal tang. And if money and patience is available to you, uh, you can also look into the absolutely gorgeous and pretty rare. Uh, white tail bristle tooth thing, but be prepared. They're spendy. The last quote I saw for one was about $250. So, uh, gorgeous fish, yes, but be prepared to open up your wallet for it. So, anyways, any of these fish will work. Now, a lot of people are just like, oh, well, what about, you know, a yellow tang? Uh, well, if you'd seen my experience with the yellow tang, I am not big on recommending yellow tangs for four foot tanks. Once they get about four or five inches in length, uh, they just get really aggressive and just turn into complete jerks and try and overrun the tank. So for them, I'd still recommend, you know, a five to six foot long tank just to keep them, you know, rather temperate long term, as well as having a different variety of tang in there with them to kind of help keep them in check. So, uh, but anyways, either way, those smaller bristle tooth tangs that I mentioned will work in a 75 gallon. Um, it would be a good space for them. They can live out their lives in there without too many issues. So uh, those are some of the big benefits of a 75 gallon. Uh, as far as number of fish, uh, realistically you could probably, I don't know, 12 to 13 depending on how many, uh, you know, fish that you're willing to maintain. Keeping in mind more fish equals a higher bio load and as well as the size of the fish. Some people like having uh, lots of small fish rather than a handful of bigger fish. So it all just kind of depends on which route you want to go with, uh, with stocking options. Now, as mentioned, with the 75 gallon, um, you will need to go with a sump system there. I mean, there's some people who try and do other options with hang on back and they can kind of make it work, but um, I wouldn't do it personally uh, just because of the fact of the matter is when you're talking about a tank of that size, uh, the flow is crucial. Once you get to a four foot long tank, one that's about 21 inches tall, 18 inches wide, you need to make sure that you have good flow with no dead spots because then you start talking about some real problems with dino or cyano, and that stuff is nasty. It is a bear to get rid of. So once again, the sump will help you ensure that that doesn't happen. Now for a sump, you're gonna wanna go, in my opinion, no smaller than 20 gallons. Um, I know, I've seen some people who do like the 10 gallon sumps and stuff like that. I am not a fan of those because Quite frankly, they just don't give you the flow that you need. You want to have the bigger water volume. 
um, end flow going through there. They don't give you the option for the beefier equipment that you're going to need. You want to have a big protein skimmer in the sump doing a good job, giving you extra flow, giving you extra filtration, and you want to have a good size return pump to keep that flow turning over in your tank. So anyway, so that is a consideration because obviously it adds a significant cost. Um, I would say, you know, once you get into the 75-gallon range, you better plan on spending, you know, roughly around a thousand dollars even with a used setup um, by the time you get all the equipment and everything else in there so uh, just just be aware that it is a, a pricey investment at that point um, so it does take a fair bit of commitment okay all right now from the 75 gallon tank as far as where you're going with it the 75 gallon also um, is going to be a significant uptick in uh, amount of equip equipment you're maintaining because you're maintaining a protein skimmer, you're having to clean a sump, probably doing a filter sock, uh, which need to be changed a couple times a week. Um, so these are considerations you need to have when you're looking at getting a, a bigger tank with a sump on it. Um, now, you know, some people are just like, okay, 75 and 90, which do I go with? Well, I'll be honest with you, as a 90-gallon owner, I wish in hindsight I'd either gone with a 75 or a 120. The reason being that the 90-gallon only adds, it's a 75 with three extra inches of height added to it. And that three extra inches of height does, honestly, nothing for you. Um, other than giving you a deeper tank to have to clean and maintain, which, by the way, is a pain, um, you know, because you have to reach down in there and scrub coralline algae off the glass once your tank gets established and everything else. So anyways, but, but yeah, realistically, you know, tanks in this size range, you're going to be doing more maintenance, more glass cleaning, more filtration. Uh, the advantage is, of course, you also get... Uh, more stable water conditions. If you got to go an extra week without doing water changes, it's not really as big of a deal with a tank of this size because it's more stable with the water parameters uh, because there's a lot more water volume. Okay, so the 120 is basically it's the same tank as a 90. It's just got six inches more width, so you do get some additional width in there to give them a little more space. Um, so that is a consideration, but you don't gain really any stocking advantages with the 120 um, because you're still talking about that same four foot long tank. So four foot long tanks are a really good kind of compromise for those who are wanting not to be limited to, you know, smaller fish, uh, wanting to get into some of the bigger fish that get, you know, six to eight inches in length or something like that if you've got one of the larger size four-foot tanks. So they are good options. They're kind of a good compromise, in my opinion, um, between those who want to have, you know, the big, huge reef tank and those who are trying to keep it a little bit more uh, temperate uh, in terms of cost and maintenance. So uh, one of the other options you can do with a four-foot tank is a one-spot fox face. I keep one of those in my 90. It's pushing it a bit, you know, with a 75 to 90 gallon tank. Um, but if you're getting one when it's smaller, I would say you would do okay with a one-spot fox face. I would not recommend any of the others because they just get too big. You'd need to go up to a six-foot tank for that. So anyways, uh, that's all I've got on this section, and thanks for watching.